They are not soldiers, but they fight wars. They work for governments, but don't wear their uniforms. Welcome to the world of private military companies, the modern mercenaries. These are enterprises that provide military-like services for profit. From security detail to combat support, from training to direct engagement, their offerings are as diverse as they are expansive. They guard embassies, protect shipping lanes, even step into war zones alongside or in place of official armies. Mercenaries, soldiers for hire, have been part of warfare since time immemorial. But how does a modern PMC operative differ from a traditional soldier? Let's delve into the key differences. Firstly, the motivation. A soldier typically enlists out of a sense of duty or love for their country. On the other hand, a mercenary is often motivated by the allure of financial gain. Next, we consider affiliation. A soldier belongs to a national army, but a mercenary has a more fluid allegiance, primarily to the company cutting their paycheck. Finally, let's look at their legal status. Soldiers have clear protections under international law. Mercenaries, however, operate in a legal grey area, with their actions not always subjected to the same scrutiny or accountability. While a soldier fights for duty and country, a mercenary's allegiance lies with the company that signs their paycheck. And when it comes to the law, things get even murkier. The actions of Blackwater in Iraq and the Wagner Group in Ukraine and Africa have thrust PMCs into the global spotlight. Blackwater, now known as Akademi, became infamous for their role in Iraq, particularly for their involvement in civilian shootings. These incidents led to an international outcry and raised significant concerns about the accountability of PMCs. On the other hand, the Wagner Group, believed to be an extension of the Russian government, operates with an air of plausible deniability. Their presence in conflict zones around the world, from Ukraine to Africa, is a strategic move to exert influence while avoiding official military engagement. These instances raise serious questions about the accountability of PMCs and their role in global conflict. Why do governments turn to PMCs? The reasons are as varied as they are complex. On one hand, PMCs possess specialized skills that national armies may lack. Think counter-terrorism, cyber warfare, and so forth. They are a reservoir of expertise, ready to be tapped into according to the needs of the moment. Then there's the matter of plausible deniability. PMCs can act in conflict zones without officially committing troops, thereby keeping the government's hands seemingly clean. Let's not forget the cost and political considerations. In many cases, it's cheaper and less politically contentious to hire a PMC than to deploy one's own military. For some governments, PMCs offer a convenient, cost-effective and politically palatable alternative to deploying their own militaries. But the rise of PMCs is not without its risks. These risks begin with a lack of oversight. Unlike national armies, PMCs operate in a grey zone, dodging the watchful eye of international regulations. This begs the question, who watches the watchers when they cross the line? Moreover, there's the profit motive. In the world of PMCs, war becomes business. This troubling reality may incentivize companies to prolong conflicts rather than seek peaceful resolutions. Additionally, the line between security and aggression becomes increasingly blurred. As PMCs gain power, they challenge the very fabric of international war laws, pushing boundaries and creating uncharted territories in warfare. As PMCs become more prevalent and powerful, they pose serious challenges to the international laws of war. As we've seen, PMCs have the potential to dramatically reshape the landscape of international warfare. But with the risks they pose, it's crucial for governments and international bodies to consider how they can regulate these organizations. Combating the grey areas in which PMCs operate will require concerted global efforts, robust laws and stringent enforcement. As the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. If PMCs are to continue to play a significant role in global conflict resolution, they must be held to the same standards of accountability as traditional military forces. The future of PMCs and international warfare remains uncertain, but one thing is clear. The world is watching. Before we delve into the final thoughts, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to stay updated on topics like these.
Your support helps us continue to produce content that answers your most pressing questions. Now let's wrap this up in our final scene. In conclusion, the rise of private military companies, or PMCs, presents both opportunities and challenges. On the one hand, PMCs offer specialized skills that traditional military forces may lack. They can also provide cost-effective solutions for governments that cannot or do not want to commit their own troops to certain conflicts. On the flip side, PMCs pose significant risks. Their lack of regulation and accountability raises serious concerns about potential abuses of power, human rights violations and unchecked violence. These concerns are not theoretical, as we've seen in previous scenes. They have played out in real and often devastating ways. The international community has a crucial role to play in addressing these issues. It's not enough to simply acknowledge the existence of PMCs. We must ensure that they operate within the bounds of international law, with clear rules and regulations and stringent enforcement mechanisms. As we navigate this new era of warfare, the decisions we make today will shape the battlefield of tomorrow. The balance between leveraging the benefits of PMCs and mitigating their risks will determine the future of international conflict.